Well, welcome back to NRM 435, GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this application, it will be a least cost path application using cost surfaces. We'll have several different rasters, and we want to build the least cost path from the Parks Highway down to the Tanana River, where we have the Parks Highway represented by a zero for no Parks Highway pixel, one would be a Parks Highway pixel. Same thing with the Tanana River, one represents a Tanana River pixel. And there's three factors that will affect the cost of road building. Wetlands, permafrost, and burns. So the first one is a barrier. The road must not go within 100 meters of any wetland. And then the second constraint is our road construction costs as a function of permafrost. So $5 per meter for non-permafrost pixels, $10 per meter on permafrost pixels. And then there's a $10 cost per meter of road construction outside the burn since large trees have already been killed by wildfire in the burn so we sort of have a discount for building a road inside the burn. So what we want to do is determine the least cost path from the Parks Highway to the Tanana River and create a table what's the length of that least cost path and then what's the estimated dollar cost for that least cost path. So in this example, these rasters are integer rasters, but they don't have an attribute table. So what we need to do is build our raster attribute table for each raster. So we can use the tool build raster attribute table for each raster. And then after we build the raster attribute tables, we could symbolize based on the values in each raster attribute table. So our next step is we need to come up with a total cost surface given our cost constraints. So anywhere within 100 meters of the wetland will be a barrier. So we'll first calculate the distance to the wetlands. In order to do that, what we need is our wetlands to be one and our non-wetlands to be no data. So we'll use the reclassify tool to reclassify our wetlands. So after running reclassify, one represents wetland pixels and all the other pixels are no data. So then we could use the Euclidean distance tool to calculate the distance away from wetland pixels. And then we could calculate our cost associated with wetlands. If a pixel is within 100 meters of a wetland, it's going to be a barrier, no data. Otherwise, the cost associated with wetlands will be zero. So we could use reclassify tool to create that cost raster. And we can use the identify tool to check our results. So in this example, the cost associated with wetlands was no data because the distance to wetland was less than 100 meters. In this example, the distance to wetland is above 100 meters, so the cost associated with wetlands is zero. And in this example, we're sitting in a wetland, so the cost associated with a wetland, it's a barrier, it's no data. Okay, the cost associated with permafrost would be $10 if it's a permafrost pixel and $5 if it's a non-permafrost pixel. So we can create our permafrost cost raster using the reclassify tool. And once again, we could check our results using the identify tool. So here we're in permafrost, so our cost is $10. Here we're outside of permafrost, so our cost is $5. And our final cost is if we're outside the burn, which would be a value of zero, it's an additional cost of $10. So we'll use reclassify to create a raster associated with being outside the burn. And once again, we'll check our results using the identify tool. So here we're sitting in the burn. So the cost is zero. Here we're sitting outside the burn. We've got to cut down more trees. So the cost is going to be $10 per meter of road built. So then we'll use the raster calculator to add our cost rasters together to get one final cost raster. And we can check our results using the identify tool one more time. So here our total cost was five due to permafrost. We're inside the burn, so nothing for that. 
and we were far enough away from the wetland, so that wasn't a barrier. In this example, we're in the wetland, so the total cost is no data. And in this example, we're outside the burn, and we're on permafrost, so our total cost is $20 per meter road built. Okay, so next what we want to do is reclassify our park's highway, so one represents a highway pixel, and all the other pixels are no data. So then we could calculate what is the cumulative cost as we go from the park's highway. So we run the cost distance geoprocessing tool, and that will output two rasters. One is what's the cumulative cost as we go from the park's highway, and then what is the optimal direction as we go from the park's highway. So then our final step is we need to calculate from the park's highway the optimal path to get to the Tanana River. And once again, we'll use the reclassify tool to reclassify the Tanana River where pixels that are not Tanana River will become no data. And then we can use the cost path tool to find the best single path to go from the park's highway to the Tanana River, minimizing our road building costs. So next we'll use the con tool to convert our zeros to no data. And we'll use the join field tool to transfer our path cost into our raster representing our least cost path. And then we'll use the raster to line tool to convert our raster to our line. So after ra running raster to polyline, the next step will be we'll calculate what's the length of the line. So we'll add a double precision field and then calculate geometry. And then we use join field to transfer the cost of building this road to our line. So we have the least cost line going from the parks highway to the Tanana River, and in this case it avoids permafrost, and it avoids any area within 100 meters of a wetland. And the least cost line distance is about 6.5 kilometers, and the path cost is about $33,700.